Hi there, I'm Black Bright and this is an awareness raising channel and it's for those of people who don't mind listening to my opinion. My opinion isn't always fact, uh, but I do like to put in the um, link below if I've got um, the information I'm talking about from a particular source. Okay, so today's video, oh, like, subscribe and share. Uh, so today's video, um, how to avoid a refusal from the Home Office. Um, well, it's not guaranteed, nothing is guaranteed. If the Home Office is hell-bent on not allowing you in the country, then nothing you put down on the form is going to help. But what I'm going to tell you will help mitigate against any kind of bias. The thing is, is that like we know, they have a rag system that flags up nationalities. So if you're from a certain country, it might flag you up and give you the red flag anyway. But if you have everything else in place, they'd have a tough time rejecting you if you know, you've know you you've got all the criteria in place. Now, what is the criteria? You want to come to the UK, um, maybe to visit relatives or whatever, but that's not a good reason to put down on your application that you want to visit your family. It's depending on what you have in your home country. In your home country, before you leave, you're going to have to have property or something that ties you to that country, a business or something. You're going to have to have money in the bank account and it can't be money that's just been put in recently. It would have had to have been put in some time ago. The same way like property, it can't be newly acquired. Like some people, they want their children to come over. So what they do is they transfer properties into their children's name or they transfer businesses into their children's name. And the Home Office know the signs. They know when something has been newly acquired. And you can't just say, oh, this property is in my name, so they're going to give it to me. They're not. They're going to want to know that you have grafted to have that business. So that business is important to you, important enough for you to go back to your country. Not just some business that, you know, your parents are giving you and then once you're here, they can transfer it back or you can transfer it back. It's not going to work like that. So not only are you, if, you, if you're being sponsored, your sponsor is going to at least, depending on how long you're going to come for, suppose you're going to come for um, three to six months, you, your sponsor is going to at least need five grand in her account or his account. You're going to need about five grand as well to cover yourself so that they can see that you're not going to be a liability. I've already said you're going to need to have proof that you've got some ties in your home country. That could be children, it could be fat parents, it could be um, a home, um, property, business, anything like that, that ties you, that is important and fundamental so that they know that you need to go back to your country and you're not coming to the UK to latch on, as they put it, because they feel a lot of people are trying to manoeuvre their way in the country. They don't believe anybody is genuine. They don't believe that people are coming to see their parents. They have got this thing in their head that everybody wants to come into the UK and stay over and overstay. Even though there are a number of overstayers, when you think about how many have gone back, is marginal, but it doesn't matter. People are going to be paying for those people who didn't go back. And depending on if you're a high risk country, like they say, Nigeria is high risk because a lot of there's a lot of overstayers from Nigeria. There's a lot of overstayers from China. There's a lot of overstayers from a lot of countries. But so the new people trying to come in are paying the penalty for other people. So just make sure that you have everything. Um, your sponsor should have at least, I'm, I'm being fairly generous, saying 5,000. They might get away with four. Um, you need, and you're going to need about four or five grand yourself. 
You need to show that you've been widely travelled. They don't want to see in your passport that the UK is the first country you're coming to. That's a definitely red flag for them. So they need to know that you've travelled, you know, to various places and that you're, you've got a travel history in your passport. That's really important. Um, you need to have assets, like I said, property, business, a good standing job. Yeah, you've got a job. How come they're letting you off for three to six months? What is the reasoning behind that? How come you're getting away with it? it are you coming to the UK as a part of your job? Can you prove that? Have you got a letter to prove it? Everything needs proof. Even the money that you have or the sponsor has, they're going to want to see how that money got into your account. Over what period? How was it accumulated? They're going to want to know all of that, you know. So they, they don't, it's not a question of you just seeing money in your account. So if you've had money in your account, and you've been refused, that's probably the reason why. Maybe the money was quickly acquired, and that's not going to work with the Home Office. They are very, very suspicious. Um, it's easier, it's harder if you're single. That's a sad thing. It's harder to come into the UK if you're single from one of these countries that they have that waves that red flag, you know, on their systems. Because like I said, they've got a rag system, a red, amber and green. Red flags, you can't get in. Amber, depends. Green, you're okay. Um, is your, if your family's in the UK, that's another red flag for them. They're going to think, well, if the family's in the UK, he's definitely not going to go back to his home country. So that's going to be a reason for them not to um, allow you in. So... I was going to suggest something, but I'm not going to. Um, so some people put on their applications, oh, I'm going to visit my family, thinking that's a good reason. But it's not, because they really think that your ties are in this country then, not in your home country. They need you to have ties in your home country. Um, what else? I think, okay, providing you've got a mortgage, rent, um, you can show that you've got mortgage um, statements, rent receipts for up to about six months, preferably. If it's longer, that's even better, but six months at least. Bank statements up to six months so they can see where this money's been going in and coming out. And if you, you know, they're going to want to see pay slips because they're going to want to correlate the pay slips with your bank statements. Utility bills with your name and address on it, and that would have to correlate with your bank statements. It'd have to correlate with every other bill you have. Driving license, and make sure that's linked to the address that you're you're giving them. Um, yeah, those are the main things, and of course you have to make sure you know. Like in a previous video, it's so easy to select the wrong thing and make a mistake on the form. The forms look they look so easy, especially when they're online. But there's no going back when you're going online. Once it's submitted, it's submitted. and It's much harder to correct. At least with the hard copies, if you made a mistake, you could always go back and ask for another form. Not so with the online. And sometimes you don't even realise you've made a mistake. And if you haven't got a printer to print it off and go through it with a fine tooth comb, you submit it and you've lost your money. So those are the things that you will need to be in place even before you complete the application form. So just make sure you've done all your preparation, that everything is in place, that your money's in place. It's been there for a while. You can prove how you've got your money. It's little simple things you would not believe what the home office look for and use as an excuse to say, you can't come in. And once they refuse you, there's no going back. It's really, really hard to reapply once you, they've refused you. So you need to have everything in place. When you think about what they're looking for, they're really looking for signs that you have no reason to go back to your country. So if you look on it from that perspective, look at it from their eyes, then you can say, okay, if it was me and I was and I was um, and I was the entry officer and I was interviewing you, 
What would I want to know about this person? What kind of guarantees would he need to show me that he's going back? So if you put their hat on for a moment and look at it from their perspective, then you can be very well prepared. Okay, hope this is useful. Bye bye.